Hi, Nicole. How's it going, Mark? Great. So <laughs> glad to be here. Absolutely. So for those of you who don't know somehow, uh, Mark Rabert is the founder and chairman of robot maker Boston Dynamics. He and his team have built an all-star lineup of robots, including Spot, Atlas, and Stretch. So Mark, June of last year, Boston Dynamics was acquired by Hyundai. Now, Hyundai is a leading provider in smart mobility, and Boston Dynamics is obviously a robotics company. Can you talk about what brought these two companies together? You know, I think that Hyundai and Boston Dynamics are a match made in heaven. You've heard how Hyundai is leaning in hard on robotics, and Boston Dynamics is a company that is not only a robotics company, but a mobility-driven robotics company, making robots that can go, are intended to go anywhere on Earth or even beyond. And so I think we offer Hyundai Day um, uh, an opportunity to uh, gain all of our technology and work together. And we're really driven by innovation, both of us. On the other side, Boston Dynamics has you know, several hundred spot robots that are being used around the world. And next year, we're going to launch Stretch, which is a, a logistics robot for the warehouse. And uh, it's going to be really important for us to scale the design, production, reliability, and support of these robots. And the skill set at Hyundai in those areas is just immense. And so it's really an opportunity for the two companies to help each other and work together and uh, work, make the future uh, in mobile robotics happen. There's so another thing, though. Um, I think both Hyundai and Boss Dynamics believe in investing in R&D for the real future. And our goal, you know, and I know the, the chairman is involved heavily in this, our goal is to make the next generation of robots, not just the ones you see here today and that we're going to make tomorrow, but future generations of robots happen by inventing the technology that's needed to do that. And uh, that's going to lead to building robots of our dreams. So as technologies continue to advance, how do you think that robots are going to be able to work together with humans? You know, we're working on the concept of companions. Mm. That is, Hyundai and Boston Dynamics both envision a future in which people and machines work together in order to improve safety of people, uh, improve productivity, and broadly improve the quality of life. So when we look at the future and we kind of look at where robots are going to go next, robots can go places that humans cannot. Right. Well, in order to achieve that vision of companion robots, we're going to have to create technology like the technology that's in Spot the Robot out here and the other ones we've been showing, Stretch and Atlas, that uh, we call athletic intelligence. Mm -hmm. That's the ability to balance, to climb stairs, to move in any kind of terrain. It's also the ability to, dex to use dexterous manipulation to handle objects in the world and also achieve situational awareness which means using your sensors to understand what's happening around you in a way so that you can uh, operate. So once you have all that, it means that robots can operate in places not only where people operate, even though that's been a big goal, but also in places where really people shouldn't operate. Think of Fukushima or Chernobyl. Right now, we have two spot robots at Chernobyl and they're outfitted with radiation sensors that can be used in order to map the uh, level of radiation uh, without having people go into those spaces at all. And so we're really excited about that's an example of providing safety for humans and you know, expanding the envelope of what robots can do. So what about space and other planets? Is fact about to become stranger than fiction? <laughs> You know, I think it's going to be a while till our robots uh, go into space. But we are working with the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, who's uh, using our robots to explore autonomies. They have them roaming around tunnels and caverns in order to uh, see what the communications uh, aspects and the autonomy problems are. And uh, you know, we're really excited about that work.
and that work that could eventually be taken to Mars or to the moon or someplace like that. That is really exciting. I love the idea of kind of spot on Mars. <laughs> yeah. I think that the idea of robots in space is actually a good starting point for just thinking about the advanced mobility uh, that they can provide us here on Earth. We plan to introduce advanced robotic technology into a wide variety of mobility systems, from directly into robots themselves, as we've been talking about, but also into cars and into urban air mobility vehicles, and maybe even into machines designed for direct human mobility. OK, why don't you unpack that last term for me? What exactly is direct human mobility? You know, our colleagues at Hyundai are exploring the idea of wearable robots. I think here's a, a picture of one of the, uh, of the early models. Uh, they're human exoskeletons, such as VEX, that physically work very closely with a human. They sort of, you sort of wear them, like a wearable suggests. And these robots could help protect workers. Imagine a worker who's doing a repetitive task that's rough on the body, and there, and the, there are many of these tasks out there uh, in industry. The robot can absorb some of that load, or even in some cases make the person into a superhuman person that can lift very heavy loads beyond what uh, a normal person can do. And in the long run, it might be possible for these kinds of robots to help disabled people, giving them mobility and freedom uh, beyond what they can do on their own. So robotics technology is rapidly advancing, and we hope to create a wide variety of new and truly useful machines, machines that free humans from the most dangerous and grueling tasks and help us live better lives. So now I'm going to ask a question that I know every journalist in the audience wants to ask you. <laughs> what do you see the future of robots looking like? You know, I think right now, most of the robots used in factories are doing very repetitive, very specific, precision-oriented jobs. And that's not what we see in the future. We see a future where robots become much more intelligent, much more useful, really contribute to productivity and safely, and be a, become a part of our everyday lives. Well, Mark, thank you so very much for taking the time to join us on stage. You've given us a lot of new perspective on robots. Well, thanks for having me here. So thank you so much.